got to leave these lights on the whole time. You'll have a little trouble seeing the video, but hopefully it won't be too bad. So if I can direct your attention to the screen, we'll give you the announcements right now. This is GP120, your church news in about two minutes. Good morning and welcome to the gathering place. If you're a guest this morning, we are so glad you're here. We hope you enjoy the service and join us again real soon. Hey, does anyone want to become a member of the gathering place? You know you do. Raise your hands if you do. Come on, raise your hands. Okay, Pastor John's going to host the membership class on June 24th. He will go over how our church is structured and what we believe. You can sign up at the table in the lobby or call the church office during the week for more. Hey church, we're having another Old Fashioned Creek Baptism and Carrion Picnic this summer. It'll be held at the Walters Farm on Sunday, July 8th, after our church service. If you are ready to be baptized, sign up in the lobby soon. Homecoming is coming! Yep! Exclamation point, June 14th through the 17th, we will again share the annual Homecoming Exclamation Point. This year will be our last year at the Fayette County Fairgrounds. And we want to make sure this is a great year for transition into something new. We will host first-time homecoming artists, the Browders, and the Neelys. Our beloved Pifers will minister to us with the classic sound we've all come to love. Mark your calendar now and be prepared to be a part of Homecoming 2018 exclamation. Speaking of homecoming, please consider joining the 100 Hunter Club. You will become part of helping us keep the homecoming admission free so that everyone can be a part of this weekend of ministry. By giving a gift of $100, you can change a life. 100 Hunter Club members receive free coffee and enjoy a Saturday morning breakfast. But none of that compares to seeing a life change through ministry. Quick reminders, ladies prayer meeting is Tuesday at 10 a.m. There's prayer at the gazebo Wednesday mornings at 6.30 a.m. Bible study is Wednesday at 7. That's it for GP120. Have a great week. All right. How is everybody this morning? We don't have any elders here, so you got me. Uh, we are going to honor our graduates. Um, if I could ask Kyle Butterball to come up and help us pass out the Bibles and. Uh, Pastor John's coming up. We'll just go ahead and do that if that's all right, Pastor. Unless you would like to open the service in prayer. Which might be, yeah, it might be a good thing to do. That's a good thing to do. Yes. Everything is a little different here this morning. But God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. turn the button in the right place it'd work father we have some wonderful folks here this morning and i thank you for every one of them and i bless them i pray right now that your spirit and your anointing will be felt by everybody that's here and that whatever we're dragging in here that troubles us will be gone when we walk out I know that we can be energized, and renewed, and revived as only you can do it. And life actually can change in an instant when we have a divine touch. So let that happen. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. Okay, this is a very special day, and uh, we do want to honor these graduates.
good day. Good day. Here they come. All the kids. Pastor likes to have all the kids front and center. We're so glad that everyone's here today. And we do pray that you'll hear from the Holy Spirit. They're still coming. I told our folks Wednesday night in church that I have felt in my spirit for a while that we need to start having some fun. Be happier and a little more lighthearted during our worship, balanced with the seriousness of being thankful to God. Uh, th this walk and this life with Jesus Christ is such a beautiful balance, and we don't have to get too heavy on either side of it. So we've tried to learn a few songs that you guys can clap with us and sing along and just have a good time while we do it. Uh, Mary actually brought me the one we're about to do now. It's it's new to everybody. It's been on the radio, so you've probably heard it there. But uh, she's the one that wanted to sing it, uh, and she never she never asked me ever to sing anything ever. And a lot of times I'll be like, Mary, we need to hear from you more because Mary does have that voice that's so anointed and it cuts right through the darkness. And we all know it. So I'm like, Mary, I need you to sing. No, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But the, I, I think her issue is she just doesn't want to learn them. <laughs> so anyway, she's worked pretty hard on this one. So uh, I'm going to get over there and help her a little bit. So here we go. There's revival. Thank you. 
Christ Jesus has been the best decision of their lives. And they have been redeemed by the blood. And you know, don't you wish some of us that are my age, don't you wish we'd made decisions like that when we were their age? most wonderful thing about serving Christ Jesus is his mercies are new every day. So from the day you start serving God, then everything in your life can change for the better. Just very quick, Mercedes, when did, when did you uh, come to know the Lord? What about you, Charlotte? I think I was around nine, but I didn't lock in until about 21, 22. And your life's been a lot different, yeah. hasn't it? What about you, Hannah? When I was a kid, like really young, six. What about you, Holly?
protection upon them through the blood and the power of Jesus. We're going to pray that they'll be blessed. What they choose to do in life will be exactly what you'd have for them and that they'll be able to be an influence. So let the blood of Calvary settle over their life even at this early age. Direct them and guide them. Stand with them against all the evil that will try to beset them. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys.
Father, uh, we are forever grateful for your presence here this morning and uh, thankful for the folks that are here on this Memorial Day weekend. A lot of people busy and traveling. I pray that you'll protect them and watch over them. But Lord, we're here and we're here by choice. So I'm going to pray that there's a special touch on everyone. And as we leave here today with a busy day that we'll have, that your presence will be the foremost thought in our minds. And we'll feel your spirit and your anointing all day long as we are right now. And Lord, as we go through this week, You'll strengthen us. We'll be strong. And in our busyness and all that we do, help us, Lord, to understand the real value of life. Loving you, loving each other. We have a lot of folks that are sick and we have a lot of folks that are getting over sickness. We have people that are experiencing healing and that's wonderful. And we thank you for that, Lord. Lord Jesus, help all the other churches that are meeting this morning and let your presence be known to each and every person that's in attendance because they're all our brothers and sisters in this town and around the world. Help us to understand the power of unity and one accord. Lead us in the paths that you would have us to walk in and help us to have the spiritual eyes to see where we need to go and the ears to hear what you're trying to tell us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to the person next to you tell them, my, you look pretty this morning. You are very pretty this morning. <laughs> you are very pretty this morning. <laughs> you are As I mentioned in my prayer, we have a, a lot of folks on our prayer list. Maybe they'll be able to get that up. Um, it's amazing. It's just amazing. I'm in front of the speaker, so I'm giving them fits. I'll walk out here. It's amazing how many people are fighting health issues and dealing with stuff. At times, that list will be longer and then it'll be shorter, but it's pretty long today. A lot of people going through things, and we really do care. And the amazing thing is, Jesus cares. He cares about every name that's up there, and he wants to do something in their lives. I really believe that. So let's all hold our hands up to this prayer list, and let's all join together. And you help me pray, Lord Jesus. We have a long list of people and families that need your help right now. Lord, I know you're moving in some lives, but we want to see you moving all of them. I believe when you walked this earth, you, you moved in, in the whole crowd. When they came to you, 
they were healed. And Lord, I know that one of these days we're going to have to walk out of this life into the next. And that time's coming. But Lord, until that time, let us walk in health. Let us be healthy. And help these people in Jesus' name to be raised up. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll take up the offering now, ushers, if you'll take your place. Tony, did Tony take off? Come here and pray for the offering. Will you do that? Lord, Lord first off, I, uh, I thank you that our economy is not yours. But you are able to do amazing things with, uh, with what you've given us to give back. Father, I pray that uh, the leadership of the church will use this to better the community, better our church, better churches around the neighborhood. Father, that uh, those that uh, are able to give are, are, are blessed beyond measure. Father, that uh, everyone in here will, will receive receive what they need from you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is Memorial Day, and uh, we do want to remember and honor uh, those that have fallen to fight for the freedom of our nation, and also that those that are, for those that are still with us. We want to honor them that have fought for our nation. So uh, if I could ask everyone in here that's been in the military, if you could stand up and uh, let us recognize who you are. And if you still are in the military, obviously. Now, if everybody would give them a great big round of applause. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. It takes, it takes a, a, a man of honor to fight for our nation and for our freedoms so that we can be here. It also takes a man of honor to raise his sons and daughters, to teach them to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, to teach them to be independent, to build them up and to edify them, 
and to let them know that they are up to the task. And we have those kinds of men in this gymnasium today. So we have a special video that we want to play in honor of all of you. The first day of kindergarten, the big yellow bus arrived. Little Johnny hugged his daddy before he climbed inside. Dad knew we had to tell him it's gonna be okay. Then he said some words to help him through the day. You'll be fine I will see you soon You are mine I'm so proud of you You'll do great Go on Be brave and strong I'll be waiting for you To get home Down the road, John joined the army. The big jet had just arrived. Now they're standing at the airport, dreading that goodbye. Dad knew we had to tell him words he'd heard before. This time it would take him through. morning on well, this weekend that we honor the veterans I pray that there'll be peace and comfort to those that have given their time 
Pray that there'll be peace and comfort to the families of those that have given their lives. Sometimes we just bliss past this time. And it's very important. We take a moment and understand that people have given all that we might be here like this. So I thank you for all those folks that are here with us still as we remember those that have gone on. And I pray as we look into your word that you'll anoint your word, anoint our ears to hear. Let us know exactly what you're saying to each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, folks that are here for the first time. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're feeling the Spirit of the Lord in this service. And for the next few moments, I want to just talk a little bit about the Word of God and pray that it'll speak to you. In John chapter 14, verse 7, Jesus is explaining the way to the Father, and he says uh, to his disciples, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from now on, you know him because you've seen me, and you've seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, then show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father, so how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Uh, Jesus has his disciples around him, and he's trying to tell them something, and this would be a, an absolutely staggering thing to be telling these guys because they were Jews. Fella, just leave the lights on. That sensor will quit once they're turned off. Uh, it'll just... There's motion sensors on these lights, and we get a light show every time you turn them off and back on. That's why I wanted to keep them on all this service. So Jesus is talking to these guys, and they, they've been raised in Judaism. And I think that this thing that I'm talking about is very important to you that have graduated and are heading out into the next season of your life because we have to know what Jesus has done to make our life a whole lot better than those that live before Jesus. And these guys are sitting here and they're not really understanding what he said because to the Greeks, if you were a Greek at the time, God is invisible. You never see God. So Jesus is saying, you see me, you see the Lord. And, and to the Jews, it was a staggering thought that you could look on God because Moses himself even had to turn his back, see the back of God and not his face, because God said, you shall see my back, but my face you shall not be seen. And so this whole thing of Jesus saying, well, you've seen me, and when you see me, you've seen the Father. Staggering. There had always been reverence and worship but there had never been this idea of actually being able to see the Lord, actually be able to have a personal relationship. So Jesus had come and he had changed all these things. They had thought that there was some kind of transist, a tra transistence between God and man that was this separation of space that could never be spanned, only could be imagined because God was so much higher and, 
his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, but Jesus had brought something new and he's trying to explain it to them. And they're thinking, now, we're going to be able to actually be close to God? This is an amazing thought. And it goes against everything we've been taught. It goes against every idea we've ever had. And Jesus is saying, to see me is to see God. So when we see Jesus, we see God living our life. Because, you see, Jesus came in the, in the flesh, so they were actually, as Jesus was trying to tell them, you're actually seeing God live your life, the life that you have to live, actually going through what you go through. So God, through Jesus, had entered into this ordinary home with an ordinary family. And, and when Jesus entered into our existence, he sanctified everything he touched. It took me a long time to wrap my mind around that. Everything that you see that Jesus did in his life has been touched by the divine, and it's different than it was before. So coming into this ordinary home, ordinary people, ordinary family, he touched and sanctified the very human birth, the humble home, the ordinary folk. Childhood was touched by the touch of Jesus. And Jesus became a carpenter. So he actually worked with his hands. God, through Jesus, knows what it is to work. Now, you know, in cre creation, God spoke and the world was created. But through Jesus, God actually used his hands to accomplish something. And Jesus sanctified the very work that we do by using his hands. He was a carpenter, so he understood what a day's work was all about. So any time that we go through anything, any hard work we're doing, any long job, Jesus has sanctified that. It's different now. He understands. He knows the difficulty of making ends meet because God didn't rain down on him all the wealth of the world like you would think God would do for his own son, Jesus. Jesus made his way. So he understood that part of living. He also probably had difficulty with people. Matter of fact, we know he did. The very religious people of the day that I'm sure he revered growing up, they turned against him. They didn't believe he was who he said he was. He had a big family. His brothers and sisters didn't even believe who he was. So he experienced all that, every problem that you and I come up against, he experienced it, but he sanctified it. The word sanctified means to set it apart. So every part of life that Jesus touched, God himself, through his son Jesus, touched that part of life. He knows what it is to be tempted. He went to the mountain before he started his ministry and for 40 days he was tempted by Satan. The temptation had to be something in his flesh that was pulling him to do that, yet he could stand against that temptation through the power and the Word of God. He used the Word of God on Satan in every instance when Satan would try to tempt him because he had it. He had memorized it. Jesus knew what it was to go through that struggle. So you see, Jesus, God working through his son Jesus, and I want to tie God to Jesus as one, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God through Jesus went through every one of these struggles, and he was leading the way for a new life for you and me. Absolutely changed everything. 
Jesus does not lead from behind. Jesus went ahead of us and blazed the trail. So anything you're dealing with, as you seniors go off to college and some of you that have graduated from college go into a new profession, then you can believe that Jesus is there ahead of you clearing the way if indeed you're seeking his leading and guiding. He's always there. And the one big, huge thing that Jesus did is he brought the idea of a loving father. The idea of a loving father. Not a God that you had to please somehow. The, that you had to do certain things and you had to follow certain rituals and you had to be a certain way. He brought a loving father that loves his creation so much that he wants a relationship with us. He said that he was going to set up his temple inside of us. He was going to live there. It isn't in a building. It isn't in a place. It's in us. We are the very temples of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. We can hear his voice. We can know what he wants for us. And he's cleared the way. He's a loving God. He, he's not detached from us. When we even pray to the Father, we should be praying inward, not outward. Sometimes I find myself thinking and looking toward God as here when the reality of it is he's everywhere and he resides in me. So when I look at you, what do I see? I see the presence of the Father. When you look at me, you see the presence of the Father. It's a whole lot better to get along with people because you realize that if they know the Lord, you're dealing with the presence of the Father when you're dealing with a brother or sister in Christ. It's amazing what Jesus did. I don't understand much of it at all. I wish I could understand more, but everything that I face in life, he sanctified it, he set it apart, and he made provision for me to get through it. Doesn't make any difference. Satan has nothing that can overcome me if I allow the presence of the Lord to take those things off. Take them off of me. Lay them aside, the weight that so easily besets me. So he brings in this idea of this loving Father that loves us so much that he gave his life for us. And we see Jesus in the ultimate act. I think it's like thinking about the soldiers that have been killed that we might be here. There's been a lot of them, thousands, that have been killed that we can be here this morning. Friday we did a little uh, ceremony at the old Washington Cemetery. Those graves of many years ago. And I was looking around that little graveyard and there were some people there. A lot of the Washington High School band was there and they played. And I was thinking, you know, what are we losing? Why aren't people interested, more interested in being part of those ceremonies? I, I remember when I was a kid that everybody went to the graveyards and put flowers on the graves and all this. And it's, it's almost becoming a thing of the past. We're not remembering. God taught Israel 
to have remembrance stones piled up where there had been victory, where there had been something significant. So I don't want you to ever forget where you came from. Don't ever forget that this freedom wasn't free. Lots of thousands of people gave their lives that we could be here. And I don't want this to be a downer. I just want every person in this place to rethink why we're here and what an honor and a privilege it is to be here and how we through unity can keep this thing strong as we bind together. Nothing's impossible. And Jesus came and he set us free. And we live in a nation of, that we're free because Others have paid the ultimate price. And Jesus himself then paid the ultimate price that you and I can be free from sin. Freedom. He did what we can't do. God, through Jesus, hung on a cross. God, through Jesus, was whipped and beaten. God, through Jesus, had his beard pulled out and a crown of thorns stuck on his head. God, through Jesus, made it possible for us to be set free. And Jesus paid that ultimate price. So it's very fitting that today as we remember the people that paid the price for our civic freedom, that there was one that paid the price that nobody could ever pay for everything that Satan would throw against us. Paid the price for sin. Made all things new. God through Jesus did it. And we can live in that existence. And we can live in that reality. It's not a fairy tale. It's not something that's beyond us. We can live in that reality, the reality that Jesus paid the price for us, for you and for me on a cross. Jesus wasn't a secondary God. He, he wasn't just some arm of God. He was God, the very creator of the universe is one with Jesus. And Jesus is trying to tell them, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Wow, we've always all of our life wanted to see what God was like. Well, look at me. You know what God's like? God's like hanging on a cross, giving his life for you and for me. God's like paying the price for sin because you and I cannot do it. Even though mankind brought sin into the world, mankind could never pay the price for sin. So God himself had to pay the price. And he paid it for you and for me. And that's a big deal. So do you think if he paid the price that we needed to be free of sin, do you think he might be interested enough in us to guide our paths? You think he might might be in love with us uh, enough to, to care when we care and hurt when we hurt? Do, do you think because he touched all of this human existence and this human life and even did work with his hands and was rejected, do you think when all that happens to us, do you think maybe he, he relates to that somehow and makes a difference for you and for me? It's a big deal. It's not about some kind of ritual. It's not about a rules and regulations. It's about a God that loved us so much that through his son, he gave it all. Amen. Just as on this Memorial Day, we honor those that gave it all for us and our freedom. There was one that gave it all for the sins of the world. God, through his son, Jesus. Will you stand with me, Father? 
on this Memorial Day weekend as the seniors will be going through their graduation ceremony here in this room in the next few hours. I'm going to pray, Lord, that each of us get a new realization of what it is to be in your presence. A new, a new realization of the price that was paid. And of how God you've changed everything. There's no gap any longer between the creator of the universe and his creation. He's moved right into our very existence and if we allow him into our very lives. And I'm going to pray this morning, Lord, if there's anybody here that's never allowed you to become Lord of their life, that right now, in this moment, they would just ask you to come in because you're standing and you're waiting for the invitation to take part in our life. Even though you've paid the ultimate price and sin is under your feet, we have to receive that reality. Each and every one of us have to receive that. We have to willingly, by choice, allow you to be in our life. And as we get ready to take communion together, Lord, we're going to take the wine and we're going to remember the blood that you've shed for our sins and it's going to be representative of that blood and as we take it in, help us to have a realization of what you really did. As we eat the bread, Lord, I'm going to pray that we'll have a new real revelation in our life of what you sanctified through your flesh when you lived here and what you went through, Lord, how it relates to what we go through and how everything's covered. Everything that we deal with is covered through your life, your death, your burial, your resurrection, it's covered. It's covered. If you'll hold your elements, we'll, we'll take communion together after it's all passed out. And these guys will sing for us a little bit while the ushers complete passing out the elements.
God, through Jesus on the cross, made provision for us. Through his blood, our lives are sanctified, set apart. And by choice, we allow him to be Lord of our life. This body Jesus sanctified. And as we walk this earth and we face problems, people that don't treat us right, situations and circumstances that aren't fair, Jesus sanctified this life and he has made provision for us and he said there'll be nothing come against us that he'll allow that we can't stand. He's always there. So as we eat the bread, as we drink the wine, the body and the blood of Christ enters into us. Thank you, Lord. The provision has been made. All things are made new. We bless you, and we thank you, and we receive you in our full, in your fullness, into our lives this day. Forward in Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. Have the best week that you've had all year.